Shalom. Aloha. I'm setting up for the new cycle activation. The new moon is here tomorrow. And it's a new moon in Virgo. And the new moon is just one reflection that we're starting a new cycle. It's not so much about the moon as it is the thing behind the moon that is also the thing behind all things. So awesome new moon in Virgo. This energy of the thing behind the thing is all about organization and order. So I personally feel that this has been a week of waking up to the, the actual transformation that's happening, like waking up to the intensity of the situation that I'm in right now. And it's beautiful and, and I'm equally as detached as I am so passionately awakening to each of the details. But it's like this. I've already formed the strategy for organizing, reorganizing my life's details. And now is a time to go, go, go and act on it. And so I'm really feeling the Virgoan energy of this new moon, new cycle, starting it off with that foundation of Virgo, of order, of the intention to analyze our lives so that we can restructure it, so that we can recalibrate our vibration and frequency to one that is of the highest service of the one, which includes self and the larger self. So that's, that's an awesome start to this cycle. Virgo energy. Can you feel it? Who else is reorganizing the details of their lives right now? Who else is analyzing? And in what way are you analyzing? Are you analyzing in a way that is maybe overanalyzing and not so great for your, your health, your mental health, your physical health, your emotional health? Or are you analyzing in a way that is healthy, riding that wave of support, that energetic wave of support that we're now experiencing as the foundation for this new cycle ahead of us? Because we do have the ability to do that right now, to ride that wave, to accept that support, to analyze our lives in a way that's helpful. Virgo has its place in the wheel, just as all the others do. And we're really about to be in that energy in a big way. So... How can you use that as a gift to analyze and restructure and bring divine order to your inner and outer worlds? So go ahead and create a space for the wisdom to enter. How can you do that? You just enter into the space, the place outside of time and space in your heart center. That's how you create a space for the wisdom to come in when you become the space for it to be filled. So you enter into the heart when you let go and surrender and become the vessel for the heart. So I'll meet you there. And when you're ready, go ahead and connect with the deck however you do, however you desire. Imagination is key. Some people like a little assistance, and I can give you some inspiration here. You can see a golden thread or a rainbow thread connecting from your third eye out to the deck. But then you might laugh at yourself. But then you have to have that self-dialogue and tell yourself that, yeah, it's a cute little thing, and it's very imaginative, creative, funny, silly, but also very real. And really works. It really works. And if you don't have the belief, then you don't have it at all. So you're welcome to laugh at it, and you're welcome to have fun with it. But magic is real. It's not just a joke. Okay? So go ahead and connect to the deck when you're ready. I'm almost done here. Okay. Thank you, archetypes, in advance. Thank you, faces of the one. Thank you for the facets of wisdom that lead to the ocean of infinite wisdom, the pathways to the heart for showing us the way. So thank you in advance, thank you in advance. We're ready for this new cycle. Show us what we're carrying, please, from the last cycle into this new cycle. 
something that we've acquired, something that we've cultivated during this last cycle and we're going to use for the next one. Show us the current challenge. Show us the ally. Show us what this is all for. All right, we begin. Oh yeah. So this is what we are taking with us from the last cycle and into the new cycle. And if you've been following the readings, then you know what this is. This is the Ten of Pentacles and this is the card of fulfillment of a cycle on the material plane. And in that fulfillment is also the new beginning. So it's an ending and a beginning of a cycle on, on the material plane. And this whole last cycle was very much involving the archetypal energy of this card and this lesson, which is all around envisioning on the inside, con conceiving of a vision or an idea of what true abundance and prosperity looks like for yourself and for everyone around you. Because when you do that, that's the occult side of this card, that's the inner realm, and then it manifests as this card, as a vision of abundance on the material plane, as within, so without. So first, we have to conceive of the idea to birth it. So that's what this whole last cycle, or even two cycles has really been about, has been really revisiting what our value system is, what our belief system is, what our priorities are, and refining our vision of what prosperity looks like for one and all. So it looks like we're taking that with us still into the next cycle. I feel like because this new cycle is starting off on the Virgoan foot and because of the wheel of time and where we're at in, in reflection of this great wheel, in so many ways I see the reflections and signs all around. I see that we are manifesting that vision in a very physical way right now. We are at the middle line where we've done the conceiving of and now we're crossing over into the new cycle carrying that with us and birthing it into reality, into this physical reality, manifesting it. So now we're, we can use that Virgo energy, that analytical, analytical energy to make sure that we stay true to our vision. And yeah, be picky. Don't settle because this is for the one who lives inside of you. Don't do anything that is not for the most high because it's just not worth it. It's not a sustainable foundation. If we want to ride this wave of support to its fullest, if we want to get the fullest potential from this, then we need to do it righteously. We must stay the virtuous path if we want to get the most out of the helpful energies right now, the ally energies right now. So it's time to be of service, Virgo, be of service. Time to analyze and carefully strategize, plan, as we very physically and in a very real way build that vision that we conceived the past couple of cycles of what that real prosperity is. Okay. What is this all for? Another 10. So we have a 10 and a 10 so far out of these four cards. So 50% of this reading is saying, so far anyway, is saying that we are ending a cycle and beginning a new one. And it's like, why are we doing this? Why are we, why have we been cultivating this image in our mind's eye of true prosperity? And why are we building this right now? Why are we using our blood, sweat, and tears for this right now? So that we can end a cycle in a way of thinking. Swords are the mind, air, thoughts. We want to end a program once and for all. Kill it. So the nine before the ten <clears throat> shows um, a young woman with loose bandages around her and a bunch of swords around her, and she can clearly set herself free, but it's the card of awakening to the fact that we are our, our own victim. We, we, stay, we choose to stay in that victim mentality, and we can set ourselves free. And I'm talking about matters of the mind here, because again, it's swords, and we, only we, have true power and dominion over our own minds. We can forget, or we can pretend we don't, but ultimately, it always leads back to our remembrance. Because the forgetting is impermanent. The remembrance is what is real and eternal. Knowing self. There's, no, there's nothing to know when you are just that. So, this is all for the Ten 
of sorts, setting ourselves free once and for all, ending a thought program once and for all so that we can clear the space and develop a new thought program around what real prosperity and abundance is. As is defined by the heart. The current challenge is the seven of swords. So now we have two swords. Okay, the seven of swords is the current challenge. This is all about strategy. This is the card of strategy. And this is a card of having to watch your back and walking on eggshells. And I see how that goes with this right now as we bring this from the last cycle into the new one, as we work on building that vision of prosperity and using that Virgoan energy to strategize and analyze, we want to make sure we're doing that right in a way that's careful, but not over analytical, not having to walk on eggshells, right? And the part about having to look, watch behind your back, remember swords is air, it's the mind. Why would you have to have that paranoia that those thoughts around having to watch your back? You would only have that if you haven't been following that virtuous path to get to this. You're not using the Virgoan qualities in their highest if you're having those paranoid thoughts. If you're having paranoid thoughts, chances are you're using that universal energy right now in a way that is not for the highest good. You're cutting corners. Maybe you are lying. Maybe you are cheating. Maybe you are being jealous or selfish in some way, there's some vice that is waiting to be transmuted into a virtue. And so while we do want to master the ability to strategize, which meditating on the emperor of the major arcana in the tarot deck is highly beneficial for this, the emperor. So if we want to embody that quality of the emperor, if we want to be masters of strategy and we want to make sure we plan carefully and we choose our thoughts wisely and we watch our programming so that we can see how one part of our programming affects the other so, so that we can unify them in a way that is harmonious. This is us watching our own thoughts, being the observer and strategizing in a very Virgoan way for the highest good. Putting our thoughts in order so that as we place them down into our physical reality as actual solid manifestations, it reflects that order. It's okay to be careful. It's actually helpful to be prudent and discerning and organized and strategizing. Those things are good. But remember what could happen on the dark side of that. And just meditating upon that briefly can reveal so much, can give you signs to help you know, like little red flags as to when you are not embodying that universal Virgoan energy right now in a way that is for the highest. So if you're feeling paranoid, if you're feeling like you have to watch your back, chances are you're not using that energy for the highest, okay? You want to have a clear mind, but a discerning mind. That's our current challenge. And the ally as we move through this challenge is... The Three of Pentacles. So we have two pentacles and we have two swords in the reading. There's only four cards. So this tells me that the ally is kind of connected to what the work that we've been doing the past couple of cycles and what we're taking with us. <clears throat> and this tells me that the foundation, why we're doing this, has a lot to do with the challenge right now. That if we get through this challenge, it will be very helpful in breaking that program once and for all. That we're ready to release so that we can have a sustained manifestation of that vision of prosperity <clears throat> so going back to the ally the three of pentacles uh, why is this the ally as we move through the challenge of the, the seven of swords the three of pentacles is all about work on the material plane when we remember that it does take work with others teamwork it takes work to do this we can't do it alone we're all together in this great work of abolishing this program in, within the universal mind because our minds are all connected. We cannot do this work without each other. In fact, even those ones who appear to be doing no work, we're all doing our part. However, what, your judgment doesn't matter. We're all doing our part. And so, for example, the ones that aren't doing the work in your eyes might be doing the subtle work that, w that would not if it was not happening, your mission would not be possible. We make each other's mission possible. Each mission is equally as important. And so for those ones, for example, who are doing great work out there and doing major acts of kindness and service every day, 
those people are affecting the people who seem like they're not at all. It doesn't matter. We're all connected and all doing our part, whether we like it or not. And so why is this the ally? We all are here together on this physical plane. We have to actually do work if we want to see this be sustained. It doesn't have to be grueling work, though. The more and more we understand these concepts, these archetypal concepts, the more and more the work becomes enjoyable. It becomes a celebration. Okay, think of the three of cups. This is the three of pentacles. What comes of working together? The three of cups, the three of hearts, three people cheersing their goblets, their cups to life. So when we work together conscientiously, then we can achieve that working together on the unseen planes. If we see work like this, it becomes a lot less toiling. It becomes a lot less miserable and we can celebrate life knowing that we're doing the work that is just simply a necessary part in manifesting the harmonious cooperation in every other dimension, in all other realms. So we remember that and that helps us as we move through the current challenge of strategizing and planning carefully and it feels like work. <laughs> like It's hard to be vulnerable sometimes and release maybe the paranoia. And how do we do that? How do we release paranoia? By correcting what it is that's keeping us paranoid. If you lied, be truthful, be honest, go and make it right. If you were impatient with someone, go and have a talk with them and express your your sadness that you that you didn't fulfill that. I'm sure they would love to hear that and it would promote so much healing for them and for you. Whatever it is that you that you're carrying that's making the work right now so heavy, make it right, neutralize it, whatever you have to do. But know that all that work that you have to do, you should welcome it. You should be so excited because it's the thing that's going to bring you to this. To doing work that's actually fulfilling. It's funny because we're running away from doing the work that is the most fulfilling because it seems so difficult, but it's actually so rewarding once we just get into it, once we just get familiar with it. So as we move through this and we do that good work of lightening our burden so that whatever work we're doing in the physical realm is enjoyable, once we do that, will really be working in, in a way that is harmonious. Work, ma manifesting those relationships, people, teams to work with that are meeting us at our level of conscientiousness, meeting us at our level of will, where we rise up, they rise to meet us. Working with those people who are going to bring us the opportunity for maximum success in the, manifesting this vision of prosperity and abundance, because... God is an intelligent design. Nature is an intelligent design. And we want we to thrive. We want we to thrive. We want me to thrive. And so God, of course, nature, of course, will bring you to only those best opportunities in the form of relationships and people and teams to work with if you're working for the highest good. Of course, you'll be given all you need, everything you need, an infinite supply of all the tools you could ever need right as you are needing them. Not a moment before, not a moment late. If you dedicate your work to the one. So this card is not just about working and working together with other people. It is about, you know, working on this material plane and that does involve teamwork. But it's also saying the many are within the one. So if you are not finding teammates, if you are not finding people to work with or collaborate with on any level that are meeting you where you're at with the mission, then don't do it. Because if you are working with someone who doesn't have a vision that is exactly in alignment with yours, doesn't, it could be two totally different visions, but they could still be totally in alignment supporting one another. But if they don't support one another and they're not harmonious, then you're working for the devil, then you're working for the antichrist, which is really just anything that is not in alignment with the highest good of the one. It's anything that is not for the sake of the creator. But if your vision is aligned with the sake of creator and something about their vision is not aligned with yours, then it's aligned with the Antichrist. <laughs> you know, this is, they're not really scary terms when you look at them energetically or scientifically, or psychologically speaking. You're either working for the creator or you're not. And so that person that you work with or those people you work with, you want to make sure that their vision is aligned with yours, that they're supportive of each other in the best ways. And you want to make sure that you're bringing 
that effort in every dimension and they're matching it. Like you want to make sure that you are doing your part and that they're meeting you there in the emotional dimension, the dimension of the heart, that they're bringing their passion into this because we know that when you're really working in, in a way that is for the one, when you're really working in an elevated and transcendental way, you are bringing that passion, you are bringing that fire. And that's what that feeling is what livens up the process and brings many blessings many blessings. It creates miracles even. And it's what makes the operation successful is that spirit of it. And so if we're not doing our part and meeting someone there, that's not fair to them. And if they're not meeting you there, maybe it's time to work alone because size does not matter to the universe. How many people doesn't matter to the universe. Again, the many are in the one. So if you have to go it alone, no, you're never really alone. And what you do is just just happens to be enough and that you don't need any other energy because your mission is just to be with yourself right now. But if you can, if you can collaborate, any opportunity to collaborate and work is great when it is in alignment. It's always going to be better than being alone because together is always better than alone because inclusiveness is a virtue. Because every time we include and we piece together pieces that are meeting each other there with that equality of drive and passion and will willing to do the work for real. Anytime those meet, the energy is greater than it could have been alone. The sum of the whole is greater than its parts. So inclusiveness in this way becomes a very magical tool and a virtue. Okay, so let's sum it up here because we're, we're done now. We pulled all four cards, so I'm just going to sum up the story for you here of what is going on with this new cycle. We've been doing work conceiving on the inner realm a vision of true abundance and prosperity for self and those around us. Now we're bringing this into the new cycle and, begin, and we're beginning to, in a very real way, build and manifest this vision. And it's going to take work as we go, careful strategizing, self-observation, reorganizing and analyzing our thoughts so that we can reorder them, put them into divine order in our heads so that in when we do that, when we do that work, we end a thought program once and for all within the collective mind so that this vision, as we build it from the foundation up, is perfectly sustainable perfectly rooted and not at risk of falling apart because we left, we cut some corner or left some hole open in the foundation. No, no. So as we carefully restructure our thoughts, put, set them down carefully in a very Virgoan manner in order, in reflection of divine order, we will attract those situations and people that will support us along the way. And we'll also know when to be in solitude to do that work. So right now, guys, it's all about being with yourself in solitude first, getting comfortable with that, knowing that sometimes that's all we need is just to be in that solitude, to be able to do the work that we need to do, whatever it is to restructure our thoughts and all that comes with that. Because once we do it in our mind, so then the opportunities are presented all around us to actualize those changes in our physical reality. We begin to receive opportunities left and right to shift our response to the universe so as to manifest a whole new world in turn. So whether you need to be in solitude for that or around people for that, doesn't matter. We are all connected. We're all reflections of the same one. But what does matter is who you're, you're choosing to spend time with. Is it supportive for the work that you're doing in restructuring your mind and the way you think about things and the way that you are giving your energy in order to manifest this vision of abundance? Are those people supportive of that path for you doing what you're doing now? Because you're in a place right now where you're working to manifest this vision that you've been refining for so long now it finally is complete and now you're on that path to building you can't look back now so as you carefully set each stone on top of the original building block you have to ask yourself along the way should i work alone today should i work alone in this moment 
or am I needing support? And do I have the proper support? Do I have people around me who are willing to do this work alongside me? Do this work with me? Perhaps you know many people already doing this work. Like, hello, the network of light workers all across the globe. Not to mention all the other dimensions. But, you know, you're not alone. And so can we find those people who uniquely support our path? Absolutely, we can find them. We don't have to do anything. They come to us. But only when, only when we're not overanalyzing and we're not thinking too much and getting ahead of ourselves because then we don't leave a space open for those people to come in. And then we just become clouded with our own thoughts and that just fills our world with a bunch of chaos and those people can't meet us there because they can't get through that wall. So when we can strategize and, and stay to the plan and continue reorganizing our thoughts and the people that come along the way come on our path as we do that, if it's harmonious, and especially if it's supportive, then yes, I say have those people around. Have those people around because they will help you to support this vision. And seeing as this is a collective reading, it's like, hello, this is so obvious to me that right now we all can support each other in carefully restructuring our thoughts, really observing ourselves and our thoughts, and offering, you know, a Loving advice to a friend is fine. Of course, we know in this New Age movement, there are many people, many gurus who want to like shove advice down everybody's throat. Don't shun advice either. Like advice is cool. Reflections are great. That's all we are anyway. So we can help each other so long as we are coming from a loving, kind and authentic place, really with the intention of growing as one unit, then there will not be an ounce of negativity detected. There will only be receptivity on both ends and the transmission will be achieved so together if we work and meet each other in that place of understanding and that place of unified intention unified ideal then together we can restructure reorganize reorder virgo and new beginning virgo new beginning order divine order we can restructure our universal mind to reflect divine order to reflect the divine ratio, to bring harmony to the different parts of the one within ourselves and on every level from the microcosm to the macrocosm. We ultimately, when we see this vision of prosperity, this one we've been working on the last couple of cycles, whatever that vision has been for you, whether it was just about your own family or the you know, the world family or the interdimensional family, whatever your vision, how, however far it went, it doesn't matter because each one is a ritual that affects all dimensions. And I'm just acknowledging right now in this moment, because this is a collective reading that if we all have the same ideal, if we all have just a simple vision of what true prosperity and abundance is for one and all, then, and, and we're really living that authentically and doing our part, then of course, it's going to be a lot easier, even in this day and age, to be attracted to those people and those situations that are going to aid you in that work. Because like I said, nature is an intelligent design and will give you everything and more. If you're on that mission to support the highest, if you align your will with that of the divine, you will receive all that you need. Of course, especially the relationships, because that's where the deepest healing happens, especially in relationships. You will get them all. You will get it all if your vision if you can raise that vision, if you can expand that vision to encompass the all, the one, the more you open your heart to see that vision, not just in your small world, but to see how you're affecting all dimensions, the more we understand how we can really work together. And this reading, this advice that we're being given right now, wow, of course, I feel like if this is really the way the world is going, then I can bump into anybody out there and chances are we're going to be having a conversation where we find we have the same goals like yeah i just really want world peace because you know what what the hell else can we focus on right now because the world is burning and um hello i don't really give a shit about you know making this little amount of money so i can get this thing in my house or like you know stopping my my kids from fighting like no i want to stop the world from fighting so this time of global crisis is actually doing something really beautiful for us because the crisis is impermanent anyway. All suffering and pain is impermanent. What is it all for then? 
for us to come together. This crisis, this global crisis, is also helping to corral us into one ideal so that we all have one priority, so that we can focus, so that we can reprioritize, so that we can analyze what the hell we've been doing and what the hell it is we really need to be doing, so that we can find order and make and actualize that order within the chaos. That's Virgo. That's what this new cycle is all about. So if we all move toward that one ideal, so what if it came from crisis or it came from an orgasm? It doesn't matter. Unfortunately, you know, to some of us, it feels unfortunate anyway. Um, this, all the global crisis that's going on right now, and when I say to some of us, I mean all of us are feeling the pain and suffering, no doubt, but the global crisis looks like a lot of things, not just the fires. It looks like a lot of emotional and unseen things as well. It feels like a lot of things as well. So that's a whole other conversation. But if we, it doesn't matter how we get there, but if we get there to that one ideal which I see is happening, and we prioritize this planet over everything else, a vision of true prosperity, which what is that really? When we consider true prosperity for one and all, like, what do you see as far as earth? Green, abundant, you see lush nature, you see a symbiotic system of plants and animals and humans, everything working together. And when we really see that and we make that our unified goal, then anyone we bump into will be in support of that path. Wherever we, at, what, wherever we are at, whatever the current challenge is, we'll all be there together. And the thing is, we are. We just need to realize it. So the more of us that realize it and come together as a community and do this kind of stuff, the more we affect everybody. And it doesn't matter that people haven't even um, you know, entered into that energetic community yet. It doesn't matter because it will ripple out to them. So whatever challenge we're going through, if we have that unified goal, whoever we bump into along the way, wouldn't it be an amazing world if whoever we bumped into, our goals, our visions, our dreams, and our hopes, our prayers are aligned and not conflicting? Because you know what? That is really the truth. You know, when you study the law of attraction and people ask, well, how do two people get the same thing if they both want the same thing? It doesn't work that way. Something always happens. Everything works around each other. No one center of a particle touches another center. They all harmoniously orbit around each other. And so imagine a world then that accepted that truth and reflected it and modeled, modeled it, embodied it all the way through to the physical, actualizing an entirely new world where we recognize that, hey, we can't want two, two of the same, you know, we can't have conflicting beliefs anyway. We always all are taken care of. There's an abundance for everyone in the most magical way, magic, more magical than you could conceive of, more magical than your human mind can conceive of. So we absolutely can achieve that. It's in our nature. It's written in our DNA that we have the ability to work together in harmony and be peaceful and make our lives so that we have one goal, so that everything thereafter is in alignment with that one most important goal. Then we would all support each other. So may we support each other now as best as possible, know, knowing that this is the energetic challenge of the moment, that this is the archetypal energy, which is a primordial energy, by the way. Each of these tarot cards represents a, something much deeper than just the picture on the card. They represent ultimately, ultimately at the root, a number, which is a keynote of the scale of the song that is the code of our primordial life force energy. So the the energy, sorry, that was a lot, you guys. The energy of the seven of swords, that archetypal energy behind our collective and individual challenge right now, is all about, and this is so that we can relate to each other and have compassion for each other, it's all about treading carefully, really thinking about each of our thoughts as we choose to program them into our minds or release them, placing them carefully. And the challenge is doing that while not overthinking, not overanalyzing. Thinking in a way that is trustful, thinking in a way that is honest, thinking in a way that is patient will help this process. And all of those lessons are in the major arcana if, in the tarot if you meditate on them. And all of those lessons and archetypes and allies are within us. So if you see through that virtuous lens, if you see through that virtuous lens that is patient, that is kind, that is honest, that is trusting, then this process, like any challenge, like any process, will be made 
graceful and a lot easier and without crisis. So when you cross paths with someone, <clears throat> anyone, know that everyone is experiencing this energy at the root of whatever the hell their challenges look like in this material form. Ask them what their troubles are. Ask a friend, ask a family member to open up to you about what troubles or sorrows or pain they're feeling and chances are you'll be able to relate it to this. Because this is the keynote that everything is vibrating with, or vibrating in proportion to, I should say. Underneath all of the extraneous bullshit and the veils, it's this at the root of the challenge. So if we can all have compassion for that and see that that's what we're all doing, then we can help each other as best as possible, even if that means by shutting the fuck up and walking away. Whatever we need to do. We don't take it personally. We, we support the one mission, however we must, so that we can... As a team, end the program once and for all within the collective mind that has been keeping us from working together in the most harmonious way so that we can manifest a vision of prosperity for one and all that is everlasting. Wow, I feel that so much. The longer I sit with the cards, the more the image, it's like a mandel brought, you know? Like I see the cards and then all the symbolism and everything that's attached to it in my subconscious mind and in the collective subconscious, all those things start to appear out of nothing. And I just can see all these symbols and energies and they're spiraling out. And as they spiral outward and upward, I can see them in closer detail and they just, they're growing and expanding constantly. It's just never ending. And so as I sit with them and as we sit longer with this channel open, the picture is made ever clearer and I can really see the connectivity. And this has been a super powerful reading and I see something totally new that I'm excited to journal about and talk with you all about and hear what you all are experiencing in your own lives in reflection of this. But what I see here is huge. I see that we're receiving a message from the archetypes. A way, a pathway to be able to relate in a new way. To learn how, by nature, we're meant to work together in a way that's not really work. In a way where we allow our harmonious nature to take over and do the work through us. So that we're placed in the situations and we're placed with people who support each other and it's effortless that's huge that's virgo that's order and the archetypes are ever trying to bring us back to that place of balance which order divine order is that all the signs work together so even though virgo is order libra is balance we need the order to balance because we need the order in the chaos. So this is very Virgoan right now. We're learning how we as beings in these multidimensional bodies can further relax into the nature of our already perfect divine order. We're finding our place in that with each of our bodies and we're learning how our environment shifts around us and we adapt to that while still maintaining our center. We're learning our order in relation to each other in this universe, how, how if we allow it, that order can create structure out of the chaos for us. And often we look at structure as a bad thing like authorities and too much order and structure and i need to be liberated but you can't fully be liberated without that structure and without that order because we can't escape divine order there's freedom within that within that system that system is there for our true protection not like the cops <laughs> in this dimension but but the law, the real law, is absolutely set up for our protection. The protection of what? The circle of life. So order's not a bad thing unless you decide to use your will in the darkness of the Virgoan mind where we overthink the order and where our place is in it, right? Like a cop, if they overthink their power instead of think thinking 
consciously about what to do with it. They just think about how they have it and maybe they get in over their heads and they get, they feel that they're so powerful and they abuse that power. No. So if we use that Virgo and energy in the light, what we can do, what we can do is allow the service because Virgo is I serve and, and I analyze, right? So if we allow that service or that analyzing to just happen through us then it becomes a lot less work so many times we feel like oh god like i have to i have to serve in this way or i have to i have to i have to no i it should be i want to i love to do it because it should feel good and right when it is in alignment with the highest good of the one we think oh no like i have to bring order i have to bring structure that's going to be a lot of work um no, it's not. That's if you get in your own head and think that you're some kind of leader or something. But who's really leading here? The one. And there's a ready order. So you actually don't have to do anything but get out of your own way and allow the flow of your work to reflect the flow of the cosmos and trust, bet, expect that it will reflect the success and true prosperity of our source. In whatever it is you do, whatever your work is, whatever thing you're doing, if you allow that work to be taken care of by the energetic archetypes that are really the operators behind this existence, then the outcome and the manifestation of that work, the fruits of your labor, will be the juiciest, the best will be the most successful it could possibly be. We will reap the most potential from that work. If the work we do follows divine law, natural law. So for this Virgo new moon, for this new beginning this month, this new cycle, my intention for myself, for one and all is to be like the Virgo in the sun, to be of service, and to analyze, and to make order of my life within and without in a way that is effortless, in a way that allows me to surrender and allows great spirit or creator source to do the work because for God it's effortless. You see, we're not being lazy and saying, oh God, you do it. It's not like that. It's not some man that's going to come down and do it for us. It's saying, oh, nature, source, I surrender to you. To do it better than I know I ever could. And the work for me will be in the allowing. And the work for me will be in the surrendering. Because it takes great strength to be vulnerable and to surrender. And to stay in our faith and connection to source that is infinite. That's our work, is to do, is to trust, to open up to source. That's enough work for us to try to control everything else. On top of that is ridiculous. Is ridiculous. It's enough work to have to stay open and connected to source. That's what we are the vessels for. That's what we're here for. Don't let the brain get in the way. Allow it to work for you, for you, for the highest you, for the one. So how we be of service and how we be a Virgo and make order out of chaos in the best way is allow nature's design to unfold and cooperate with it. That's how we can be a good little Virgo. And when we do this, remember, the mission becomes easier. The work gets easier. We align with people and situations that support us in a way that is huge individually and collectively. And ultimately, we find our way to success and completion of a cycle as individuals and as a collective. We finish a cycle and begin a new one as a unified collective. Whew. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Happy new beginning. Happy new cycle. Love to hear your thoughts. Please share what you feel about this powerful message. And feel free to give your thanks to the archetypes. Feel free to ask me any questions about tarot. I've been working on a book for a while now, and it's shifting in a huge way, and I really feel guided to ask, what are your questions about tarot? What would you like to learn about it? Um, ask me anything, and I'll be happy to answer and 
potentially use it as inspiration for my book. So stay tuned throughout the cycle, you guys. We do this four times a month to reflect the four quarters of the moon, which the moon is really just a timekeeper for an unfolding that happens each month with our monthly individual and collective cycle as, as consciousness. <laughs> so feel free to follow me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Rebecca Magic. Follow me here on Facebook, whatever you love to do. Try to tune in live if you can. It's a lot of fun. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. Even if you watched this cycle video uh, a year from now, in some way it would be relevant because that is natural law. That's the intelligent design of this multiverse. So join or don't, live or not. But I really enjo enjoy hearing your perspectives and I really enjoy especially when you join me live so that we can open up the channel together. So again, four times a month, you guys, if you want to do this with us, please feel free to join. And shalom.